So I've had a special request to do another bouting analysis video, this time um, of a fight with not me, um, is between Miles and Gav. So uh, Gav will be in the green and he's a practitioner of Bolognese swordsmanship um, and Miles does uh, British broadsword. Um, so we'll have a look and see what happened. Um, and just for a little bit of fun, I've decided to count the hits. Not that, not that it means anything, but you know, just for a bit of fun. Um, so let's have a look at the fight. Whoever filmed this uh, missed the few, first few seconds. So we start here, uh, where Gav has made a thrust in fourth around the outside of Miles's outside guard, obviously in an attempt to draw it to further to the outside and open him up. Miles does not take the bait. Okay, he deflects the point just enough, um, and then delivers a direct strike to Gav's hand. So. This is a thrust without opposition, and Gab attempts to turn his hand back to second to get opposition, but doesn't get there in time. So really, the lesson here is that thrust without opposition are risky. Here, Gab cuts at Miles's leg, and Miles slips it in a beautiful example of the Highland style. Um, he doesn't go for a single-time countercut, but steps back in and uh, strikes and outside to Gab's arm, which lands beautifully. The lesson is don't make a direct cut at the legs. <laughs> Gab charges an attack here, rolling it up above his head. Miles simply misreads it and parries to the outside uh, and gets a cut to the inside of his arm. What he should have done, of course, is to slip back when Gav charges his attack to give himself a bit more time to see where the attack is coming in at. There's a nice exchange here, uh, but with no hits. Sadly, it ends in a double. Okay, so what happens here is uh, Gav attacks in a false time. He steps forward while lifting his sword up to charge a blow um, into distance. Now, at that point, Miles maybe he could have got a parry down there, but with his sword up there. He really had no choice but to counter-attack at Gav, um, ending in an inevitable double. As there's no way Miles could get back out of the way in time. Gav here is being a bit too clever, so he's trying a double feint. So he feints to the inside, back to the outside, back to the inside. Um, Miles reacts to the first one, he pulls into a hanging guard, and realising that Gav is fluffing around, just moving his sword back and forth, makes a direct counterattack to the outside of Gav's arm. While there are no hits here, this is a really nice exchange. So it starts with... Uh, Gav extending his point into provocation. Uh, Miles parries that and reposts. Miles redoubles, forcing Gav to abort his uh, repost and the swords just clash. Um, and then Gav lifts his arm and Miles lifts his arm and they both kind of wait for each other. And Miles eventually has a swipe at the space where Gav's arm needs to come through. Gav slips that, slips his foot back just a little bit, and nothing happens. This is rather good. So Miles adopts an, an underarm guard, basically inviting an attack to his outside line. Uh, Gav takes that invitation and disengages around the inevitable parry and redoubles his attack. But Miles Mullinets out of his initial deflection and comes down on top of Gav's attack and parries it rather neatly. There. Lifts his sword to charge it. Gav picks that as an outside attack and does a false head deflection to the outside. 
Um, but unfortunately for Gav, it's uh, sort of a, a low horizontal cutter. At number six as opposed to a number two, it comes in under his parry and strikes the outside of his arm. Here, Miles pulls off the double feint that Gav was attempting a little earlier. So he starts in an inside guard, um, feints outside, feints inside, and then turns it to the outside. Um, and Gav parries the first two, but is hit by the third. Miles actually does a lot of stuff with the hall, so he's actually doing a variation of Highland Lords, which is a 17th century British military system. So the Gav returns the favour with a nice feint to the outside and cut to the inside. Now, Miles does get a little bit of a counter cut on Gav's arm, but honestly, it's out of time and much less effective than Gav's solid stroke across Miles' neck. So you've got to give that exchange to Gav. This is just a very subtle feint to the inside cut to the outside, uh, just enough to draw Gav's parry and expose the outside of his arm. Gav tries another feint here inside and outside. Uh, Miles pretty well ignores it, keeps his sword in the outside guard, receives the real attack and delivers a nice riposte to Gav's head. But it does illustrate a point about fainting in that if you're going to make a feint, you've got to make it slow enough and obvious enough that the opponent commits to parrying it. There's no point in fainting so fast that they don't have time to react. And that's a little bit about what's happened here. Gav drops his point here and delivers a rising thrust, uh, which looks like it actually hit Miles' left arm, but honestly it was aimed straight at his throat and would have gone through his arm into his throat. Um, Miles does parry this. He does a nice little false edge crosswise parry to his outside. And had it been a straight thrust, that would have been fine. But because the angle of the thrust coming upwards, the parry is ineffectual and the thrust goes straight through. So Gav uses a classic Bolognese technique here, a provocation to the inside, followed by a cut to the outside to Miles' flank. And it hits, it's a solid hit on Miles' flank. Now, Miles parries the initial thrust, as he must, and attempts to slip that low attack as it comes in underneath his flank. Now he does get out of distance, he's just not quick enough. Um, meanwhile, his sword countercat solidly to uh, Gav's arm. So that's a double, uh, unfortunate for Miles, um, because he reacted to that correctly, just not quickly enough. What would have made uh, this technique successful for Gav would have been making that second cut high. If that had been a good solid reverse cut down on Miles' head, Gav would have had the opposition to prevent the counter cut. Um, but by choosing to go low to the flank, he does expose his, his arm to the counter cut. There's no hit here, but it's just, it's a nice example of technique. So, Miles engages Gav's foible um, and turns it over in an attempt to open up a, a line to strike within the guard on the outside line. Uh, Gav, being Italian trained, has nothing to do with that, and he simply takes that energy, turns it into a Moulinet, which intercepts Miles' attack, and nobody gets hit. But really nice technique from both of them. <laughs> so here, 
Gav is using his full advantage in height and reach. Okay, so he's simply dropping his point directly into Miles's forward thigh. Even at full extension, Miles is still short of stabbing Gav in the face. Um, so with the, the longer reach and the longer sword, um, that is a perfectly safe attack for Gav to make. Um, and uh, Miles coming forward rather than slipping back has no chance of defending that. <laughs> Another nice exchange here. So Gav faints a little bit to the outside, doesn't fall Miles, cuts to the inside, which Miles receives on the inside guard. He reposts to the outside, as he should. Gav parries that with an outside, which is perfectly reasonable, and reposts with a dead, straight, vertical blow, a number seven uh, in British swordsmanship, a fendente in Italian, to Miles' head. Miles' mistake here was not recovering his sword. So having cut to the outside, he should have immediately recovered into a hanging guard. He failed to do so. And uh, this is a nice provocation from Gav here. So he, he beats Miles' sword upwards uh, just to annoy him and then hangs about with his sword hovering around. Now, Miles, being the, the shorter of the combatants, feels like he's got to come forward in order to reach Gav um, and ends up stepping in a false time. So he ends up stepping forward into Gav's reach before he swings his sword allowing Gav to deliver a direct counter-attack. So, Miles is having difficulty getting into, into distance against the taller Gav, so here he's using a sort of gathering step to come forward. Um, throws a cut one, Gav parries that, uh, with an inside, drops his sword low. Miles redoubles with a cut two to the outside. Um, Gav throws a, a false edge deflection to the outside, but mistimes it, gets the angle wrong, and gets struck on the outside of the arm by Miles's outside cut. <laughs> Having sort of figured out them. Gav is uncomfortable when Miles gets close. Miles really presses in here. So he, he bears forward under his outside guard, um, throws an outside cut, recovers into a hanging guard to receive the riposte, um, and then is in plenty of distance to throw the inside redoublement. And since that worked so well, Miles does it again. Okay, so he really presses forward here carries the inside, cuts outside, recovers hanging, and then gets what would have been a very nasty slasher across Gab's face. Gav starts using his point here to try and keep Miles at bay. Um, Miles kind of limbos his way out of that thrust. Um, so as that point comes forward, he just kind of leans back to avoid it and comes back with a solid cut down on Gav's arm. And really the only way Gav could have avoided that um, is probably if he'd committed a little bit more to that thrust. Um, he scoops his point up a little bit, which raises it out of line. Um, Whereas if he kept it on line and pressed forward, there's only there is a limit to how far Miles could have limboed. Gav does a kind of a half-hearted provocation to the outside line here. Miles folds that over with a crosswise parry. Uh, Gav 
takes that energy and rolls it into, again, a bit of a half-assed inside cut, um, which is already a close line. Miles has turned to an inside guard. Um, and that's probably the big mistake here. And Gab ended up attacking into a closed line, which allows a very easy parry for Miles. Um, and he reposts to the outside to of Gab's thigh, and he can't get out of the way in time. Uh, from Miles' point of view, it's actually quite a nice use of some Palisamata backsword technique. So we need to get a little closer to see what happens here. Um, essentially, Miles attacks in what is essentially a false time. He's trying to disengage and deliver a thrust to the inside line. He does not have his arm anywhere near full extension. Um, and so when Gav simply uncrosses and throws uh, an inside cut at Miles' neck, Miles' sword is folded over in a deeply uncomfortable way because he has no structure at all at that point. So that was uh, definitely Miles' fault. In this final exchange, Miles is trying to be clever. So he sees that extended point and he thinks to himself, I can beat that out of the way and circle around with a nice solid downright blow. Um, Gav, being a good Italian, simply avoids that beat. As soon as he sees the sword coming at his sword, he takes his sword away and strikes Miles. Um, and the big mistake here is Miles comes forward on his beat. He's attacking Gab's weapon while stepping forward into Gab's distance, which again constitutes a false time. So he deserves to get hit. <laughs>